Over the years, I've done breakdowns of the Soul Series bosses based on difficulty, quality taking into account lore, design, and entertainment value, and most recently I broke down the best and worst of their arenas. The final piece of their puzzle is a ranking that has been requested time and time again over the years, and DJ Dmod is finally ready to deliver. On your request, that is. Every video I make is going to show my bias, but I don't think there's an aspect of the boss package that is more subjective than their theme. Taste in music is going to vary dramatically from person to person, so instead of giving my own highly biased list, I pulled you all and after tallying up nearly 1500 votes, I've got a list of the top 10 boss tunes to share with you today, and even a few interesting data bits on how tracks rate from game to game. But for a moment, allow me to welcome back our return sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends, a mobile dark fantasy RPG lighting up the charts with nearly 15 million downloads in the last 6 months. Raid features a turn-based combat system with a compelling story campaign, raids with friends, a glorious PvP arena, and over 400 champions for you to collect and customize from orcs to elves to knights to undead, and it's completely free to play. Recently they've added new features such as auto battling, letting you grind hands free while your attention is elsewhere. There are also weekly events such as arena battles and unique dungeons that award special prizes. The game's growth shows no signs of slowing down, with huge plans to update the game over the next 6 months by way of this roadmap. To get in on the fun, click the link in the description to download Raid. You'll receive 50,000 silver and a free epic champion as part of a new player program. Sponsorships like these go a long way in supporting the channel. So I hope to see you out there and thank you for listening. And now without further ado, here are the community's choices for the top 10 best boss themes in the Soul series. Number 10, Sister Frida and Father Ariandel. When I'm drafting a portion of a video covering a particular boss, I always listen to their theme to throw my mentality into the heat of that battle. Soundtracks have the power to tie in your emotions as it relates to what you're currently experiencing, and when you replay the track later, it can bring those sensations back. It's a neat phenomenon. When I was listening to Freed's track for the last few videos she appeared in, it's grown on me as one of my personal favorites. Sister Frida and Father Ariandel have the most chilling, intense music in the whole series. The melancholy and creepy chords playing the first time Frida went invisible is probably Probably one of the most nerve-wracking experiences I've had playing Soulsborne. On top of that, the gank fight and Black Flame have much more intense music that still carries the motifs and themes from the first phase. I'll never get over how restless and uneasy this theme makes me feel. Fits the character, fits the lore, absolutely flawless. Hats off to you Samuel on taking an analytical approach to how the theme and fight tie together throughout its different phases. Your passion really shines, and the same could be said for all of you that commented. Reading through your comments gave me an even greater appreciation for how much these tracks mean to us both in-game game and at their best on a rotating playlist. For Frida, I agree that the subtle tones and operatic melody lulls me into a false sense of security as she stalks her prey carefully. As the fight gets more intense from the duo to the Black Flame conclusion, the full chorus bursts in to match the new energy. This slow build makes my anxiety climb to the moment it explodes into all-out adrenaline in the demanding final moments. It's handily one of my personal favorites, and I'm happy to see it made the same impact on all of you. Number 9, Knight Artorius. In contrast to Frida, I have to admit that I'm scratching my head on this one. Obviously, I love Artorias. Fantastic lore, perfectly balanced challenge, excellent move pool, creative buff mechanics, and high caliber entertainment value are all present here. But this is the only boss on today's list I had to actually go back and listen to the soundtrack to remember what it even sounded like. As soon as I did, it all rushed back to me instantly. It wasn't quite the same without the desperate cries of rage, but I can't believe I slept on this track for so long. I still don't think it would quite crack my own top 10, but it's certainly well in the conversation. When you first see the intro, you'd expect a really badass orchestral, but when it begins, it's a somber theme, capturing the hole that Artorias is falling into. And soon, the music ramps up the stakes as the fight is realized. Artorias, a once great hero, was reduced to a hollow shell of what he once was. The theme is badass, but it's just really sad. I want to thank you and other commenters for giving me a greater appreciation for the song. Your words are sound reminders of how much the Artorias fight means to me, and breaking down the choice of sorrowful melodies over bombastic operatics is something that I never thought of. As you well stated, the tragedy of Artorias is done justice through its theme, and for that I fully respect the community's choice to place it in the top 10. Number 8, Lady Maria of the Astral Clock Tower. Lady Maria EZ number one, best OST in the game hands down, motherfucker. I listen to this in my car sometimes just because. Shit slaps, that and Kira's theme from JoJo, but that's irrelevant. I should probably go into why a little. Basically the way the music builds and how it goes from beautiful gothic chants yet gets progressively more feverish and manic fits astoundingly with the frantic nature that Maria fights with as the battle progresses and she starts to unravel. Like I said, best OST fucking easy. What a roller coaster. Best OST, motherfucker. I be right 
riding around the neighborhood, blasting these jams, letting the world know the Top Souls Waifu in Best Boss Contender isn't just brimming with fascinating lore, blowing my mind with her smooth mechanics and thunderous challenge. Now nah, my girl has a bomb ass theme. Shit slaps, my boy. I even had time to throw in an always relevant JoJo reference. Easy. Well, nothing else to say on that spot, Nyani. Your taste in boss OSTs is truly a thing of culture. Brandon also did a superb write-up focusing deeply on how the simple melodies in the beginning match her grace while still exuding intensity. Split down to the frantic harmonies in the third phase that perfectly illustrate her desperation to defeat you and hide her darkest demons. It really can't be understated how much these songs enhance their accompanying battles. Sure, if you muted the game, every bit of the boss design would remain, but when every shred of battle is enhanced from note to note of its OST, that's when you know you've got an incredible boss track on your hands. Number 7, Dragon Slayer Ornstein and Executioner Smo. I wish there was a way to put an addendum in the survey for the come on and slam version of ONS's theme because it is fire. Of course, it wouldn't be what it is without the original masterpiece. Their theme is royal and fitting for the strongest remaining Knights of Gwyn. The theme immediately creates a sense of power around the duo. There's also the fact that you won't get tired of it, which is good because the amount of deaths they will cause. Their OST really does ooze grandiose power that matches the scope of the challenge ahead, and I love the thought of it playing well on repeat because you're right, this duo has claimed the lives of many undead, and yet it is right amongst the best in a very stiff competition. If anything, it has to be one of the most memorable on the basis it's been burned into most of our brains for how long we spend here. That fact coinciding with it being held in such high esteem is plenty to indicate why it's deserving of its place as a top theme in the series. Number 6, Abyss Watchers. I'm thrilled to see the Abyss Watchers didn't fly under the radar. I think most would agree the Watchers are by far the most memorable early experience in Dark Souls 3, and part of what stuck with me since day one was their wonderful theme. It perfectly embodies their graceful combat and fearful presence, but also mixes in the tragedy of their past with both Artorias and them being overcome by the Abyss. Mixing that in with the visuals is exactly why the Abyss Watchers are one of the greatest non-DLC bosses. Hard to disagree with you on all accounts. In contrast to Artorias, there is a powerful choir involved in a significant portion of the track, but that doesn't mean it's used toward an emphasis of over-the-top energy. It still holds a tone of sorrow underneath its growing intensity that builds as you slug it out. It matches their ferocity, but conveys the agony that lies beneath their failure to overcome the abyss. I couldn't think of a better fit for their battle, or many candidates more do a spot on today's list. Bro, if Ludwig ain't top 5. Well, do I have a treat for you, because everybody's favorite flesh horse squeaked his way into the top five just barely by two votes over the Abyss Watchers. It's difficult because no one on today's list is undeserving of the honor, but hot damn am I biased on this one. Ludwig's theme is the tale of two masterpieces, and that transition when he regains lucidity has operatics powerful enough to end No Not November through sound alone. It's a marvelous piece in terms of composition, and is tailored to complement the fight itself perfectly. Words just can't do it justice, and it remains the only track to make me physically react while listening to it. Same, if you mean gasping with glee like a schoolgirl every time he says those famous words. Ludwig is the peak of Bloodborne's hand down reign as the best soundtrack of the six games. The first phase feels like he's slowly crawling on your back ready to slaughter you. Although let's be real, most of this phase's music is overshadowed by the boss's beautiful but the real start of the show is when the cutscene kicks in. When that eerie theme starts playing, you knew something's gonna happen and it's gonna be something big. And then when Ludwig regains his humanity and starts fighting you like the proud hunter he once was, the music starts building. And building. And building some more. Until boom! You hit that huge, satisfying, majestic choir that releases all the tension you've built and makes an already great fight into uh, a perfect one. Number 4, German the First Hunter. Emotional impact and conflict cannot be understated here. Gediman's fight has an astronomical narrative depth that is matched perfectly by its accompanying theme. The goosebump inducing cutscene before the fight prepares you for an adrenaline filled epic battle the likes have never been seen. Yet when the fight starts, the low somber strings bring you back down to earth. A realization that perhaps Gediman isn't the bad guy in the traditional sense and is even attempting to help you just as he had the whole time. As the fight goes on, the music grows just as the ferocity of the battle does, crescendoing into an epic chorus of voices booming as Gehrman pulls out all the stops in an effort to free you. And all of this is in the context of the fight itself. As a standalone piece, it's just as relevant and fantastic. A real argument as to why video games should be considered a form of art. Amen to that, Ethan. I really can't say it better. The theme perfectly fits the conflict of taking on your mentor, and the relationship underneath with Maria, his contract with the Moon Presence, and your intentions for slaying Gehrman to either succeed in his folly, or ascend to a higher plane makes the battle riddled deeply with conflict matched magically by this haunting tune. Number 3, Slave Knight Gale. 
For me, Slave Night Gale's theme is the best one. It just made me feel all the moments I had with the series describing it perfectly with a slow start at the beginning of the fight, just like I had my first time playing Dark Souls, then turning into an epic fast-paced rush, just like you experience when you really get into the game. Then a full trip of emotions came through my heart by listening to him say, I always get chills when the music changes as the real fight begins. On sheer depth alone, Gale might have the most impressive composition of any boss team in the franchise. It's quite long, alters with nothing short of perfection throughout every beat of the fight, and it pulls the exact emotions out of the player to maximize entertainment, excitement, and the adrenaline rush. I've spent plenty of time gushing about what I love about Gale from his arena, lore, design, mechanics, difficulty, and impact, but for the first time I'm proud to be able to give him proper due for boasting one of the finest themes in all of Souls. Number 2, Soul of Cinder I'd have to say my favorite theme is Soul of Cinder. That theme is so good, from the choir in the first phase to the slow transition to Gwyn's piano. I love how this theme has the fan service, but also has a sort of uniqueness to it, just like the fight does. This theme is also great because of its finality, which goes along with the theme of the game. Throughout my Best Boss Arena video, I harped on how much the end of a journey can leave an impression on you. Soul of Cinder manages to do that in twofold. It's the end of the trilogy, and it pays homage to the series' roots with a musical cue that gave us all a flair of nostalgia. The Dark Souls games left a lasting impact on so many of us, and this theme not only heralded in one of the better series' bosses, but also its conclusion. That gravity carried a lot of weight, one which the accompanying theme has the power to carry. The transition to piano in the second phase had me shaking my first time throughout a bittersweet taste of the final moments of a series that impacted me so heavily. The theme executes flawlessly what the developers wanted to accomplish here and is a killer track to listen to on its own. But it wouldn't be what it is without the number one theme. And the number one best boss theme in the Soul series, Gwyn, Lord of Cinder. You can't pay homage without a source, and I think it's hard to argue there's a boss tune more iconic throughout the franchise. Gwyn goes plin plin plon epic style. Indeed he does, my friend, indeed he does. The haunting piano after your trek through all the horrors and monstrosities you face through the dead and dying world really conveys the fact that whilst your journey may be at an end, the tale isn't a triumphant one. It really hammers home the somber themes that are consistent in the Souls games. You hit the nail on the head, Mordow. Take the majority of today's list as evidence. Most of these themes are highly regarded for their ability to communicate emotion in a meaningful way, one of the most prominent being sorrow. I'm all for sunshine and roses, but I value being able to lose myself in the desolate, unforgiving world of souls when the urge strikes. When it does, I'm reminded of the tragedies around every turn. No matter whether you want to herald in the Age of Dark or continue the cycle, it's a somber moment to end the husk of a lord who's been kindling the embers left over. The impact is driven home thoroughly through those three notes we know so well, and it's a great choice for the series' best boss theme. With that in the books, let's take a look at a few interesting tidbits I pulled from the survey data. As you can see on the screen, there's quite a disparity in the themes that received top 50 voting. Dark Souls 3 handily received the most votes in the series, distantly followed by Bloodborne and Dark Souls. I'd give it up to Bloodborne though, it stood tall being one of the only two exclusives on the list. Speaking of exclusives, can we sort out the publishing clusterfuck that is Demon Souls and get a remake please? Tower Knight and Penetrators huh, 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 deserves more recognition, and Maiden Astraea not fighting to be in at least the top 15 is a travesty in my mind. Which is the track I've been playing to this point, by the way, if you like what you've been hearing. Meanwhile, Dark Souls 2 received lackluster voting across the board, with its highest ranking boss Sir alone making number 22 in the voting, but still only receiving recognition from less than 5% of total voters. I have to admit, it's not a shocker. I couldn't tell you a single memorable theme from that game. Meanwhile, Sekiro also received a small bit of support, but did have both the Sword Saint and Divine Dragon crack the top 20. I have to say, I really expected Divine Dragon to receive more love, but I do understand that many found Sekiro's soundtrack over Overall, to be underwhelming compared to the series track record. Finally, I want to shout out a few themes other than Maiden Astraea that deserve more love. First, Lawrence the First Vicar. Many of the bosses toward the top of the list are all considered top tier quality, but Lawrence managed to claw his way to number 18 despite the sizable hatred he garners because he has a fantastic theme. I'm gonna toss two comments up on the screen that I encourage you to take the time and pause to read for yourselves because they are an excellent dissection on what makes it so good. But second and most importantly, it's criminal that a boss as mediocre as the living failures was graced with such a phenomenal track. Put some respect on their damn tune. Dadmod is officially giving you homework. 
Go listen to that and come back to comment on how hard it slaps out of 10. Meanwhile, it's time for me to take a bit of a breather from the Souls Boss videos. I love coming back and talking about them, but I never want things to get too stale. I've got some long-standing ideas I'm keeping in mind for them in 2020, so I hope you're enjoying all the other content the channel has expanded to. There's a few surprises I've got for the holidays, I'm going into overdrive with the top 100 until the end of the year, and I've got loads more planned for 2020. I want to thank everyone who voted, and all of you that left such incredible comments for me to pick for the video. I had a blast reading through them all. And of course, I want to thank you for watching today, much love to you, and I'll see you in the next video.